So first of all, good afternoon. And to start, just a brief introduction on chronic lymphocytic leukemia. CLL is the most common leukemia in the Western world. It's a chronic, incurable disease. We will now see with the new, with the new therapy, very promising, and with a, with a very variable clinical behavior. In fact, we can distinguish between two main subsets of patients, those who rapidly evolve and with increased aggressiveness and refractoriness who require treatment, and those who remain stable for years that do not require treatment. So it's very important to have a prognostic marker in order to define these two types of patients, in order to decide not to overtreat a patient or to, or to what we say, a watch and wait for a patient. I just reported two examples of uh, many prognostic patients in the context of CLL. The chromosomal aberration, like 70p-11q-, minus, minus, or the mutational status in particular genes such TP53, Notch1, S3B1, and BIR3. And here on the side, you can see an example of how the integration of these two parameters could distinguish between different group of patients with significant difference in overall survival. But among all the different prognostic parameters in CLL, I can say the historical one, one of the most studied is the immunoglobulin EV chain variable gene, the IGHV gene. In fact, patients that are unmutated for this gene have poor prognosis high risk of genetic lesion, a high degree of clonal evolution, while patients with mutated immunoglobulin have good prognosis, low risk of genetic lesion, a lower degree of clonal evolution. Again, this slide to underline the fact that uh, a single CLL cell after clonal selection and transformation through BCR signaling and microenvironmental interaction create the disease, and all the CLL cells express the same identical IGHV gene. The importance of this gene is, is not only related to as a prognostic factor, since it's very important, as you probably already know, in the context of the new therapy, since the BCR pathway, mole key molecule in the BCR pathway, such as B BTK or PA3 kinase delta, are very important for this pathway. So the so the, the BCR is very important for the CLL cell. And besides prognostic factor could be a predictive factor since in this recent paper, the author demonstrate that patient with mutated immunoglobulin but uh, uh, treated with standard chemo immunotherapy that are minimal residual disease after six, six months of therapy have um, free disease survival comparable to those of the age match control. Instead, patient with unmutated immunoglobulin Unmutated immunoglobulin seems to not benefit from standard immunochemotherapy. So in this context, the, the, the IGHV gene mutational status could predict the outcome of the therapy. And for this reason, uh, there is an indication to introduce uh, the IGHV mutational status in the management algorithm for patients with CLL and to give the new BCR inhibitor not only to the T53 deranged patient, I mean those with the 70p minus or TP53 mutation, but to give the new BCR inhibitor as first line therapy also to the patient with an unmutated immunoglobulin. So it's very important to analyze the immunoglobulin. Here, just a scheme of the immunoglobulin synthesis, what we can call in a fashion way the LIGO approach to cite Professor Costa Stamatopoulos. And as you well know, at the end of the process, we have more than 10 to 12 possible immunoglobulin combinations. So how we can could sequence this gene? In my lab, we were used to follow the European Research Initiative on CLL recommendation. We are reported the table of the publishing the paper. So they say that as a starting material, you can use both the genomic DNA or the cDNA, RNA, retrotranscribing cDNA extracted from blood. And as a PCR strategy, you can use the leader primer or the FR1 primer in junction with an antisem primer in the JH region. So, from 2002 and 2015, we, in our lab, we sequenced almost 2,000 cases of CLL. Using a, this strategy, we perform the RNA extraction from blood. We return transcribe the RNA in cDNA. We use a PCR base based on the leader strategy in junction with a CMU primer, or in case, for difficult cases, a FR1 JH PCR strategy, a Sanger sequencing, and we analyze the sequence with the I, against the IMGT database. 
Since my institute purchased a MySeq instrumentation in 2014, we decided in my lab to move all our diagnostic related to Sanger sequence to the next generation sequence. And of course, among them, we, we, we moved the IGHV mutational status. So here, just a slide to summarize that from in the middle of 2015 and today, the end of February, we analyzed almost four, uh, five, uh, 400 cases of CLL diagnosing using the lymphotrack assay. Of course, we use the DNA as a starting material from blood. We use the leader JHPCR, and again, for difficult cases, the FR1 strategy. We run the sequence on the MySeq, and we analyze the sequence using the lymphotrack software or the IMGT database. Here are a scheme of the flowchart, the MySeq. You have the FASTQ, you have the software, and here you have the and here you have the table. In the table, you have all the data that you need. You have the number of the sequence that you analyze. You have the number of the sequence for each particular group with the percentage with the IGH being assignation and with the percentage of mutation and different, and different graphs related to this number. So, of course. Before to start to use the lymphotrack assay, we decided to test the lymphotrack assay against our old previous method, and we, we took uh, 29 cases previously analyzed with our in-house method, and for 26 of these cases, we had a clonal rearrangement that confirmed our previous result. And when I say confirm, I mean that we have the same IGVH gene and the same percentage of mutation. We have two cases with no rearrangement, what I call polyclonal cases as previous result. And when I say polyclonal, I mean that we were not able to find a particular clone, a particular IGVA gene overrepresented also in the context of the table generated by the lymphotrack software. Plus, we have an improvement. Since we have one cases that were polyclonal in our end with our previous method, but it's clonal, presented a particular GVA gene with the lymphotrack assay. So we have a concordance of 90, 70 percent, 20 out, out of 29 cases, plus an improvement. Since we have, we can say, a false negative cases that, that's not, that now with the lymphotrack is positive. And so if you have to decide to use the parameter in the context of first-line therapy, this could be very important. And we will see later the result in the entire court. So we, so we decide to use this, uh, this assay. And uh, starting from the middle of 2015, we analyzed 401 CLL cases with the leader strategy or FR1 strategy. And here the result, it seems quite complex. It's stable, but I will go into the detail for each cases. So we have 370 cases with clonal rearrangement, canonical cases. We have three cases, clonal with the leader PCR and polyclonal with the FR1 strategy. Nine cases, on the contrary, polyclonal with the leader and clonal with the FR1 strategy. Eight cases with a two clone, with a biclonal rearrangement, both with the leader and FR1. And I mean by clonal, I mean they have two IGVH genes, the same IGVH genes with the same overrepresentation, both with the leader and with the FR1. We have four cases that were biclonal with the leader, but just clonal with the FR1. Two cases with three clones, three different clones in the leader, but only one in the FR1. One case is with, uh, that has a clonal rearrangement with the leader, and then it's clonal with the FR1, but the clone is, the IGV gene is different. And four cases with no result. So, hope, okay. So, just to give you an example of what I mean for clonal cases, a clonal case is this is the result of the lymphotrack assay. You have the number of the sequence for each group. You have different graphs. I don't want to go into the detail of the different graphs since the Excel file is very easy to understand. But I want to point your attention to this table. As Dr. Arsila said, the, what they call the merge table. In the merge table, you can see that in the first table, you have different 4B. You have different group of four or different 4B IGVH. While in the context of the merge table, you have only one line referred to the, to the 4B IGVH gene. And the number of the sequence is the sum of the different, of the, of the number of the sequence here. This is important because this gives you a better representation of the percent of your clone inside of your DNA. And this could be possible since, because you have to think about that, the lymphotrack assay use different, use a multiplex PCR. So you can sequence your IGVA gene, but with different primers, so it's perfectly normal to merge the sequence of the IGVA genes. 
Moreover, in the CLL cell, it's reported that you have a sort of intraclonal diversification. You have a principal clone and different other clones that derive from the, from the primary clone, which one or two base of different. And in the merge sequence, the software sum all together the different, uh, the same IGVA gene, the different for a maximum of two bases. While this is, the this is the case of what I say for polyclonal, polyclonal is a case that not in the primary table and not in the merge table give you a, tell you that the one IGVA gene is overrepresented over the other. And this is the case that where we found we have three clonal cases with the leader, I said, that were polyclonal with, uh, clonal with the leader and polyclonal with the FR1. For these cases, we have the possibility to use not only the leader strategy or the, F, or the FR1 strategy, but the, since we are trying to use the kit for the clonal rearrangement, we have the possibility to use both the FR2 strategy and the FR3 strategy. So we, see, we analyze these cases with these uh, different methods. So you can see the result, uh, of course. And as you can see, in the context of the leader, of the FR2 and the FR3 result, you can see that you have a primary clone, a VH4 and 34, but you cannot see this VH in the context of FR1 strategy. And why that? That because when we align the sequence generated by the leader strategy, you can see that we have, uh, we have a, a lot of mutation here. So probably the FR1 primer fails to bind to this region due to the high burden of mutation in this region. And this is the case of where we have, uh, in total, in our core, we have 12 biclonal rearrangement. And we sequence all these cases, both with the leader and both with the FR1, to be sure of our result. So in the context of eight of them, we found that we have the same two, the same two IGVH gene both with the leader and with the FR1 with the same percent of overrepresentation, but for four of them we found that we have these two. We found you can see here the result. We, you ha we have two different IGVH gene, but only one of them was overrepresented in the context of the FR1 strategy, FR1 PCR. And the same happened in the context of the cases that I call that we have triclonal rearrangement here, the result. You, you see that we have three different clones with the leader, but only one was overrepresented. And the, in this case, the other two were, mm, no, there's no uh, indication that the, the, the other two were presented in the context of the uh, lympho tract analysis. So to summarize our result, we found that we have 388 cases with clonal rearrangement, eight cases with biclonal, and five cases that were polyclonal. This is very important since we have only five negative cases. Remember that we, are, um, we analyze only CLL cases at diagnosis, and since in my lab we have the possibility to perform the immunophenotypic analysis and the molecular analysis, I can say that these, um, these cases are CLL. They have a clonal disease in the immunophenotypic analysis. So we have uh, only 1% of false negative cases against uh, against 4% of the old strategy. It could be, a, this is a very big improvement in my lab since, again, if you have to decide or use as a prognostic market or use as a predictive factor, this uh, less negative cases is better. So, but it's not, it's not all important to, to give an IGVH gene. It's important to assign, to say if a patient is unmutated or mutated. I say that unmutated patient, those who who have less than 2% of mutation respect to the closest germlines, and the mutated patient, those who have more than 2% respect to the germline. And again, according to the ERIC recommendation, we use, for our old core, we, we were used to follow the ERIC, so we, we use the IMGT database, and for this reason, we compare the lympho track and the IMGT software. Here are the result. Of course, we found 186 unmutated CLL and 266 mutated CLL, both for the lympho tract and both for the IMGT. This is a graph of the correlation of the percentage mutation. It's a perfect correlation. I've never seen a graph like that in my research experience. And more important, in the context of unmutated or mutated definition, we have a perfect agreement between IMGT and lympho tract, except for one cases. Here are the cases. It's a case is a 3 and 10 to 1 IGVH gene. 
both for the lympho tract and both for IMGT, but it's unmutated for the lympho tract and mutated for the IMGT. I have to say that I have no explanation for this thing, but it doesn't matter for this thing because, this, because these cases are 3 and 21 cases with a stereotype CDR3, and it's well reported that, case, that patient with 321 IGVH win and stereotype CDR3 experience bad prognosis irrespective of, um, of IGHV mutational status. So for these cases, it doesn't matter. And since, as you understand by my presentation, we were very fond in my lab with the array recommendation, and since we were used to use the RNA, we decided to, since uh, according to the ERIC database, you can you do the ERIC recommendation, you can use the cDNA, because you have some pros. Again, uh, in the pros, you have that the, the RNA material identify only productive rearrangement, but of course you have a cons, since if you have to extract the RNA, it's more difficult than extract the DNA, and of course you have to perform a retrotranscription experiment. But since we use the CLL in the context of the research, we have the possibility to extract the RNA. And uh, we decide to slightly modify the lympho tract assay. So we have, uh, this is the protocol. We have the RNA extracted from blood. We write on transcribing cDNA. We use the leader PCR or the FR1 PCR in the context of cDNA. We run on the MySeq. And of course, we, ana we analyze the sequence with the lympho tract assay or with the IMGT. Here an example of the different. You can see the different. That you, this is the same cases with the genomic DNA or the cDNA and the same PC, the leader PCR. You can appreciate the difference. If you, run, if you perform the PCR on genomic DNA, you have an amplicon over than 500 bases. In the context of cDNA, you have an amplicon less than 500 bases. If those, for those who are familiar with the MySeq, this could be important since we can, in this context, you can use the nanoflow cell of Illumina just to save time. 24 hour running instead of 48 hours of the normal flow cell. So of course I have to say that is only true if you have CLL a diagnosis, not if for MRD. And so we analyzed 70 cases, previously analyzed with the lympho tract assay on the DNA, and for these 70 cases, analyzed on the cDNA, with, again with the lympho tract assay, we found the same clonal rearrangement that confirmed previous result. And the, I say in the same clonal rearrangement, both in the term of uh, IGVH gene assignation, and both in the term of percent of mutation. And we have a concordance of 100%, perfect. So to conclude, NGS strategy compared to the old strategy give better result and less false negative cases. NGS can be used in diagnosis, lymphoma versus reactive proliferation. We have, a, I say good, but we have a perfect correlation between lympho tract and IMGT definition of mutated and unmutated patient. NGS strategy in our end can be used both, with the, of course, with the DNA and with RNA. And of course, as Dr. Asila said before, NGS can be used in minimal decidu in MRD. And I'd like to thank uh, all the people who helped me in this, uh, in, this work, in this job, in particular Tiziana and Vanessa, who performed most of the job, my chief, Dr. Walter Gattei, and all our Italian collaborators, again in VivoScribe, for inviting me here, and all of you for your attention. Thank mm -hmm. you.